everyone, this is SIG API. Uh, <clears throat> 9th July, if everyone can add their names to the attendees. Okay, so the first topic for today I have is this um, API fuzzer um, cherry pick. Uh, I believe we'll need an approval for this to go through. A couple of things I had in mind was, first, I think we need to regenerate the data for, um, for some of the latest API changes that have went in. So I've asked Srija to take a look. Um, the other thing is, since we are going into 1.3 branch, we will have to create this 1.3 um, directory for that release branch. So <clears throat> I'm not sure if we want to do that in this PR or in a follow-up PR, but that's something we'll have to discuss. I think that's that's supposed to be in the, is it supposed to be in the backport or is it supposed to be in the main Both. branch? The release one point three. Yeah. Where, where is it supposed to be? That's my question. It's supposed both? to be both, yes. Release okay. as well as the um master branch. Okay, yeah, I think it's a follow up unless it's it's a follow up unless uh, they GA it today and then you can do it, I guess. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I think we can do it as a follow up. Um, just to make sure that all the changes are covered, we can do it actually after the release, right? Yeah, I don't think it would be correct to do it now because there is no release. Yeah. One point three, right? So some of the changes that uh went in recently into master, uh, I think it was related to a networking change that um you tagged us on. That one had API changes, and the master is I mean the main branch is having the correct YAMLs for it because this fuzzer test was uh, merged, but it was not merged in the release branch. So we'll have to regenerate uh, the but entire YAML here again. I'm not sure which one you mean, but there was a one addition, there was a, a change in, in networking related and it got merged in both stable and mine. I mean, it got right. in main and then it got backported to the 1.3 branch. Yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. But because okay. of the API changes, uh, in the main branch, uh, when you run make a uh, generate, right, the API changes are reflected in this YAML um, for, for the head directory. But in 1.2, because in the release branch, it was not... Uh, merge those changes are not generated right so we'll have to regenerate those here this pr was is older than the merged one mm, okay but i think also in main i'm not sure that this was created you are saying that if you change the api you uh, the, the yaml here must also get updated yes but then you need you need something to block it. Then you cannot assume. It's I, mean, I, I think the make uh the make commands automatically do that, right, Srija? Right. We have that machinery in place. Yeah, make commands will do that. If they are any place, how come? So I don't understand. Ah, and that, now it, it, you are talking only on, uh, about the back back port. Yes, the cherry pick. The cherry pick needs to have those. So then it, I will expect it to fail here. Uh, 
can you do a test again maybe only for the i don't know which which one should fail make the generate unit, should fail the unit test should fail unit test no really okay so Oh, they have changed the name. So yeah, you can circle back to this one. Okay. But I definitely think that this PR was older and we might have to push. Uh, and this is actually a one-time thing because after this gets merged, it will always be in the release branch. So the make generate will get things there, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, let, let's see how it goes. Um. <clears throat> So, um, Srija, are you going to help with um, pushing the um, regenerated data? Yeah, yeah, I'll push the latest. Yeah. Okay. I think that's all I had for this topic. Uh, you want to discuss this? So this is a question uh, regarding zero value of an object. Okay. Yes. Full of time. Yeah, you don't need to open it, but uh, yes, it's about um, um, we, there is a test in the that is checking that the structs are actually pointers, not. Uh, and I'm I don't I didn't understand the reasoning uh, because if, from what I remember is that if you have like omit empty, if the structure is zeroed like it's the default one, no matter what are the the content inside of it, if it's the zero value, then it's not presented. So I I try to understand in which scenario this is a problem. Yeah, so my understanding was that inside of that structure, if there are uh, int or string fields, right, they will default to Golang uh, defaults. So for example, a Boolean will be false, uh, integer would be zero, a string will be empty string, right? Right. So those to prevent those kind of um, scenarios, there is always a convention that the empty fields should have to be pointers. If they are not pointers, then they will uh, they will go to the uh, type defaults of Go. Yes, but that's okay. So. So there are two two things here that I am a bit puzzled. Like if you go to let's let's look uh, before I'm talking. Let's check this. what was the actual values there. I think all of them. There is no such thing as an integer there or something. All of them are anyway pointers. I think. Uh, oh. There is a list which uh, you it's it's like a pointer and you have. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, everything here, ah, and you have the boolean. That's the only one that, uh, uh, I guess. Yeah. So, mm, but but that's like, 
So, so I, if I understand correctly, if, for example, under this structure, we will ha only have uh, lists or maps or uh, even an, an another uh, pointer to a struct, for example, then this test should not have failed. Yeah, because in that case, the default val value of a pointer for this struct will be nil. Go like okay. nil. So the reason here is that it failed is because of the last value, uh, the last uh, uh, value. I am not actually sure of the last value. Let me check. I mean, this so, definitely uh, is reason why it failed, but I'm... I need the source to list is a map. Yeah, resource list is a map. So this one defaults to nil. And yeah, I think it's this. I think it might be worth it to just remove this and check um, the test again. No, no, I just wanted to understand. Uh, I mean, I would just want, I, it was a question regarding understanding because I don't see a problem that we made it a pointer. I just, I just wonders why why it is behaving yeah okay great thank you for clarifying this yeah i i think this is one of the first things that we benefited out of the merging of the tests we we prevented this uh problem going in yeah by the way but from from a sense of uh uh, like, like it's interesting. Like, if if someone wants to say explicitly, like it's it's about the interpretation of, of if you set here false. Uh, if you don't say anything, is it the same as setting it to false? That's something like that, I guess. Yeah, Which yeah. Is, uh, indeed, a problem. They they have already done that in this documentation, right? So it would have it would not have been a problem because the defaults are already like that. Uh, but it is something where in case if the default behavior is not um, expected or defaulting to false is not some not the use case, then it would have been really hard for us to catch this if not for the test. Uh, this is the, 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 the... Uh, this the someone that like, looks like the boolean itself is very is it's not nice that they added this boolean, but I guess they solved something like this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there, there is another item I didn't wrote it here. Is uh, I tried to revive that uh, charter uh, proposal. Uh, I will, we, it's it's very slow, I know, but uh, there were a lot of uh, other prioritized things, and I didn't want to push too much. So let's see how it rolls out this week, and we'll continue following it. There, there was one. <clears throat> I I also actually after the comments there, I also checked like. In in Kubernetes, the 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 API itself is is placed under the SIG architecture as one of the sub projects, and even that sub project is is uh, is half of it is about the API, and half of it is about something else. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think the upstream uh, Kubernetes is. Um... SIG API machinery, which includes no. everything from API to encoding, decoding objects into HCD and 
I don't think it's about the API machine. API machine is totally something else. Not what we, not the charter that you try to, to phrase here. It's the charter that you try to phrase here, phrase here. I think it's under, it's a sub project under the SIG architecture. This, uh, the API uh, machine is just about toolings to, to work with the, with API things, for example, uh, what kind of helpers and uh, types, stuff like that. It's not about, uh, not not even related to what you what you wrote in the charter. If I if I'm not mistaken. That, yeah, that's true. The other channel that I see where people post this stuff is um API reviews, and. Uh, are you saying that API reviews is part of the uh, SIG architecture? I don't know. I know that the uh, SIG, uh, it's like the SIG government, the SIG API government, something like that. It's not a SIG. API government is under the SIG architecture. I think I put it in the, the comment. You can look in the comment of the, of the PR. See, I said... Uh, there is a link to the to that to that place. This one is. Oh, I see. I think the details of all the processes here. Nice. Yeah, all the things that you wrote, I think, are are actually here. That's that's like the policy and the all the. But it includes also, if you as you saw. Um, there is a sub project, uh, yes, this architecture, and that like includes more things like design principle, uh, uh, review process. All of this is part of this uh, sub project. So they def they define more things than the API. Yeah, I think so we are specifically like, yeah. focused on these two things. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I think this is very helpful. Uh, we can take a lot of inspiration out of this document. Yes, I think also Fabian there commented that his main, uh, the the reason he he wants this as a SIG API, he, he suggested maybe to change the, to rename it to SIG API governance to make it more clear, but uh, the reason he said it, he prefers it at the moment to be under the SIG is in order to have uh, like ownership on the on the files, but uh, like ownership on the API itself. So, so you'll have like a piece of code there owned by, by someone so you can have uh, power to approve or disapprove. But that's like uh, not to cause a lot of uh, noise uh, it's like I will not I will not care about it too much. Like let's let's first start uh, start with something, even if it's not uh, enforcement or having having the need to vote. Uh, it may it, come later. I I actually think it might be worth it to start discussing about enforcement. Um, <clears throat> the reason that I'm thinking that way is we have been running this process for at least two releases now, right? And the fact that we are not enforcing stuff means that we are not getting enough participation. I wonder yes. if we start enforcing things and, and coming up with the right policy, it will be a small amount of churn for the first two releases but at least we'll have um, more engagement 
with with the process and with the with the things being discussed here yes but i think uh let me make it it's like we i'm not sure if we are not enforcing if you think about it, it's like because i got some feedback that we are uh causing uh, like we are sometime uh, doing some some uh, so, some of our reviews is causing things to get slower or just be dropped so in this sense i think we we are enforcing like if we take a a proposal and then we manage to comment on it in time then then it's it's harder for them to continue without doing something um i'm just afraid uh, i first of all i agree with you like that's like the basic the basis that i agree we should enforce but i'm a bit afraid that we we are not like they don't even they, they we had resisted in it to get the the charter because they were afraid that we will enforce and i want them to to first accept it and then uh then go one step beyond and i think we do have support from uh, for example from fabian but i will want to to take it like maybe it's it will be important i mean it will be more sensible to to do it very slowly so we will not cause some political problem with some some of the members here but i in general i agree with you yeah. i don't know how to how to make sure that we are not uh, we are always in the picture and Hello? i'm not sure that we are we are i mean, i will tell you the truth i'm also not 100% sure that we are like ready in the sense that if we say if you give a feedback to a to a to a change or to a proposal that we can reference it to the to the some policy or some some points that we already built on yeah no i i agree with you and i that's that's an issue in in terms of bringing more contributors into this um, call right yes if we have more cycles to spend on this project i'm i'm sure we can get to a point where you know um, we have a document that we refer on each um, each review but it's so it's it's like a self feeding negative cycle, right? You don't have cycles, and and then you know we don't have enforcement, so the group doesn't go beyond you know two or three people that that show up here regularly. So we'll have to break out of that cycle somehow, and I was just trying to make this enforcement as a as a way you know to to get more fee folks interested but yeah yeah I, 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 I hear you i i think we might not be ready yet um and no but i'm not i'm maybe it, it will be uh let me ask you have you spoke with uh, fabian uh privately maybe on slack and uh, no i have not okay maybe i i will i will check with him i will try to to see if uh what if we can do it i mean i'm a, i'm a bit like uh, concerned that it's very hard to to do this and but i'm uh, i want him if he's if, if we need someone to support it from the he's one of the co-creators so co like the co-authors of this project so i think if we get his support then it will be easier for us to go forward and I think it would be a good idea that uh, we would get some uh, advice from him on how to to get this in. Like, should we should we make the the request to to have like enforcers now, or should we wait until first the charter gets in, and then maybe some some things some minimal things will happen, and then we will do it. I'll try to to see. We need you are right. We need to somehow ask him. Maybe Lobo has uh, an idea.
Luvo, this is the way that I'm checking if you're uh, if you're listening to us. Yes, I'm, I'm actively <laughs> thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. No, so you want the enforcement on Qbeard um, in a sense that if anything is going to be uh, added to the API or modified on the API that it's not going to be merged without seek API uh, approval. So that's a good, that's like uh, you already in the implementation. The, for example, I can, this is one option, what you said, but another option is that it must go, if someone changes the API in any way, like even changing defaults or stuff like that, they will have to send a proposal, for example, or they will have to visit this meeting in order to get uh, like uh, to get some feedback. I am not sure that it requires uh, an actual approve, like something like that. Although that's also an option, so it's it's unclear, really, in in what sense the informant should be. We I don't think we need to go uh, all the way in, but. But I think with the changes that we are having now, that's at least this is my claim. I'm seeing things that happened already, even for for V1.3. Uh, I'm already seeing the the root problem. In my opinion, it's like my interpretation. What's happening? First of all, what Ali said is that people are not coming here. They are just doing it, and that's it. But the main problem, I think, the root cause is that there is some. Uh, um what's the name of that i'm always uh, forgetting um um what's the name one second conflict on interest i guess something like that because sometimes things are getting in and they are somehow discussed offline on some way and they get in because it need, it solves some important problem. But that's like the head of of someone that needs it in a specific version and very quickly, or someone that needs to fix some some user problem. But it doesn't co come with the with the interest of a clean, stable, and and useful API. Like that's like different heads, different interests so having a proposal it's a good step to discuss it to make it more visible and discuss it anyway the enforcement i don't know what is really the the correct way to enforce it uh, i will not want to go straight to having approved rights and then blocking it there but uh, we need something in the middle at least at the beginning i think i don't know what that will be it's a discussion so for, for me, from a logical perspective, it doesn't make sense to not have enforcement if you want people to uh, to go here or you having a, some kind of power. Like you, you, you're never going to enforce everybody to, to talk to you or at least give you a time to review something if you don't require them to have a proof, for example, right? It's just... There is always going to be someone who skips you. Um, so yes, but you could you could trust them, like in a sense. And if you if you see that you cannot trust, then then you can enforce. You can say, okay, I I we tried it, the trust didn't work, so let's do it harshly. You are right, what you're saying. Well, I'm just too concerned that going directly to to having such high rights is. Uh, May... Yeah, but the problem is even that you cannot enforce anything on on others because you don't have a power as an individual, right? What do you mean? Like, in a project, there is limited power for individual. There are multiple approvers, and it's almost... Uh, imperative that there is going to be disagreements but 
most of the time there's going to be majority which agrees upon something. So in our in this case, for example, you need to pursue majority of the pro project approvers, for example, that having some kind of enforced API reviews is beneficial for the project, and then, then for therefore it should be enforced. Right, but it's it's easier to to ask, for example, to go through a to some lengthy review process of an API change, like uh, as a polite request and asking the maintainers to fo follow that uh, over, um, over saying that, no, we will, if you don't convince us, we will not approve your change. So it's like, we trust you, like saying, we trust you that you will go through that this process because we wrote the process and we agree to the process. And yes, you're right, we need to agree to the process. But once we agree to the process, we expect you to follow that process and you should not do shortcuts, even if it's very urgent for you. So we can try to trust it. And if that, if that one does not work, then we have a reason to say, okay, it doesn't work so well, let's enforce it. Like enforcing so, it, I mean, you have a proof, you will have to get an approve from one of the SIG API, uh, someone from the SIG API and that will approve your thing with the, when, when he approves it, he thinks only about the cleanness of the API. He doesn't care about anything else. So um, there is only one problem I see with this. That is, while politely nudging people to follow the right path is is a good thing if if that is not followed we are only increasing the work that this sig needs to done needs to do in order to clean things up right for example if feature a does not follow the right conventions and it goes in with uh, some kind of non uh, ideal API changes. That means that it's only um, increase the burden of the SIG to clean up later or of the project to clean things up um, later on, right? So it's like trading off getting the right kind of changes at a slower pace, even if it causes issues with, you know, not having bandwidth or so or release process versus getting things in faster and and having to clean up later. Yeah, but if let's assume uh, let's assume that the policy and the 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 API policy or the API rules of how how a change to the API should follow, that one is agreed. Like we will send, let's say that you, we focus on that and we set some document about it, okay? And we ask everyone to to feedback there and we'll have the majority agreeing on it. Let's assume you have that in place. And then you send a message to the whole project, especially to the maintainers and you ask them, please make sure you follow this when you, when you do API, when you, re, when you approve, before you approve API changes. So, I will expect them to follow that. So if someone is not following that, that's an exception. I, I want to be positive here. I right? find this as an exception, and we can ask them as a for as a when we identify that to to try and and do follow this uh, this policy and check what's going on. I mean, I will say that if it happens, it's a it's a mistake, and they should fix it. But if we see that it is occurring a lot of times then we can enforce it. But I, I don't object about the enforcement. I'm just a bit concerned that it will not be accepted so smoothly and it will cause a lot of uh, friction. That's it. So if if we manage to have support from someone like Fabian to to do to enforce it, I I'm I have no complaints. But if if he will find or or it will be hard to to do that, I will go with the 
putting a pol policy in place, making sure it's very clear and everyone is aware of it and asking uh, all the maintainers to follow it. Yeah, that I think that makes sense. I would add to it, um, add that if we were to take that route, I would want to start off with some checkpoint, right? Say, let's say in one release, we'll come back and see how many times the process has been followed, uh, how many times it has not been followed. Do we need to do something about it? Provided we have that checkpoint um, built in place, um, I, I think it's a good way to start. Yeah, it makes sense. Like a con constant feedback is also a, is always a good thing, and to adjust. Yeah. I would say we should also add it to the if we write some documents, some policy, then we should write it there as well. So we will have like uh, checkpoints every I don't know, once in a while, and and do that. Yes, it failed as you as you, as you said. Okay, great. Uh, are there any action items for this particular uh, topic? I I know we discussed a couple of those. I'm sorry, I, I didn't catch up on the CKPI chart, but uh, can you summarize for me what was the block blocker there, in your opinion? Um, you you mean in this uh, pull request? I think so, yes. Um, <clears throat> the, okay, so the summary of the discussion here is that first, um, there were some concerns on, you know, how would we assign chairs or co-chairs? Like, do we need people to be reviewers for it? for them to be chairs, but I I think that, you know, that discussion has settled. Then the next uh, thing that came up was where this particular uh, work is more aligned to. Do we have like sick commute, compute, where we'll focus on all encompassing things or we have just SIG API or what, what like, how is this project or this particular work aligned to what what is the um you know goal for it and <clears throat> i think what ed was mentioning earlier in this call today was that he found out that the work we are doing is part of like if we compare to kubernetes it's not related to api machinery sig it's related to um a project under SIG architecture. So there is a link um, in the agenda, um, which will take you to this particular uh, page. And if you look at the projects run under this page, there are two here, API conventions and the API review process. A lot of what we have been discussing in this call is aligning to this um, two uh, points. So, yeah, that, that's the next um, thing. We should uh, change the name of this SIG to SIG API Governance as suggested by Fabian. And then um, Ed is going to have some discussion around, you know, what kind of process or enforcement stuff we, we have to um, follow as, as part of um, the review process. Um, that, that's my summary, Lubo. Um, I don't know, Ed, if you want to add anything to that. Oh, I just saw that uh, 10 minutes ago, Vladik answered and he said that he prefers it under the SIG architecture, like a sub-project. Uh, I'm just not sure, like, I know that what he wants, but no one is working on the SIG architecture. And so, which is hard. So, I, I'm a bit, uh, I don't know where it will go. Let's see. But I'm, I'm not against having this under SIG architecture. I'm just 
not sure who will own the cigar architecture, which is a really big one. Uh, if if Vladik will want to own it, then then he can send the cigar architecture charter, and we can just add to that charter the sub project. Anyway, that's that's the. I think it's going somewhere, so that's a, at least good because before it I saw it is going nowhere, and now it's progressing. So. If it's if it's SIG API uh, governance or uh, a, a SIG architecture a SIG, a SIG architecture sub project, I'm I'm good with both. Okay. By the way, SIG SIG sub sub projects are still owning code, so so that's. It will still answer Fabian need for code ownership in terms of be owning that uh, the type files or the anything that's related to API changes. Okay, great. Um, yeah, I, I think that's all the topics we had. A um, <clears throat> couple of more minutes. Does anyone have um, any other topic we need to discuss here? No, I just have a note, uh, just uh, raising that I will not be available next week. And I think next week and the week after. So... Like I'm uh, on vacation. Okay. Well, um, happy yeah. holidays to you. And you. Um, <clears throat> Lugo, if you, I'm not sure if you would be available. Um, if you are, then I think we can continue. Otherwise, um, we can cancel this call. Yeah, no PTO plan on my side mm -hmm. yet. Okay. Right. I suggest you do. You have the meeting, but if you can, if you, there is no comment, meaning we don't know if someone can will interesting to join or not. You may, some sometimes I'm surprised that people are joining, but maybe giving a five minute uh, option to join then it's not bad. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, then um, see you guys next week. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.